Hello my friends and welcome back to another Brotato Danger 5 random random run. Hope you're all doing well. It's an exciting time because at time of recording they just announced the Abyssal Terrors expansion. So we are in for a new expansion this summer, which I'm really looking forward to. And uh, the undersea theme is right up my alley, so very excited for that. And I'm going to try to reach out to the developers and see if I can get some sort of, like... Q&A with them or do a launch live stream or something. We'll, we'll see how that works, whether they're interested in doing that, but I'm obviously, of course, going to be covering the expansion when it comes out. For today, though, we're going to do a random, random run where we take a random character and random weapon and try to beat Danger 5 with it. So let's do that and... We will just see what the game gives us. We've got the Engineer. So the Engineer is really interesting, of course, because it, it has lower damage and everything, but higher um, higher engineering. For my previous random random run, this is one of the challenge runs I was really interested in repeating. We got the Hammer, which was very difficult, and I'm still not 100% sure if it's winnable, but I, if we roll it again, I'll try it. If I don't roll it again, don't worry, I will come back to Engineer Hammer at some point. But for now, I'm going to go with either the... Uh, we're going to go with whatever we roll, except for the wrench, which of course was what I did with my class guide to the engineer. So let's roll and see what weapon we get. And we got the screwdriver. So screwdriver is really interesting for engineer because your engineering modifications mean that the base damage is really high. Even though your percent damage is relatively lower, the base damage of screwdriver is going to be massive. Uh... And, of course, the landmines are going to do a lot of explosions as well. So, we're going to see how many explosions we can fill the screen with, with the screwdriver engineer. Let's get to it. I'll sell the wrench as soon as we get to the first shop. One thing that is a downside of this build is that our constructs all spawn in the same place, which is actually kind of a downside for non-turret builds, because... The landmines won't be properly spread out. They're supposed to spawn over the map, but I've seen them spawn more often in the location that the rest of your constructs spawn, so I'm not entirely sure how the coding for that works. Um, but mostly, you want, when you're playing an engineering build, to have incidental damage all over the map, because that gives you a much wider coverage, and your actual attack damage is only part of what you're doing. So the engineer's constructs all spawning in the same place is in some ways a downside. Here I'm going to roll, we're just looking for harvesting or luck or engineering, so I'll take any of those, and I'll take harvesting first and foremost. Lumberjack Shirt is excellent for the engineer because it will allow my landmines to break trees if we get Pocket Factory later, which obviously we're going to be looking for very aggressively. Then Lumberjack Shirt and Pocket Factory is an awesome combo. I'll take the Lost Duck as well, because the bonus luck is going to be incredibly useful. And we'll recycle the wrench here. Let's roll, and I'm rolling for screwdrivers now. Just want as many of these as possible, because that boosts our engineering massively to have our engineering weapon set online. I think you can usually expect to find five because screwdriver is so cheap. We only found four because we missed once, but that's still not terrible. So here the landmines are properly scattered out. I think what happens sometimes is that the, the landmines get spawned in the location with your other constructs when you also have a wrench. Um may be just an issue with the, the way that that is set up. And we get a little bit of harvesting. I'm going to go ahead and take the attack speed here just because it's a level 2 upgrade. And attack speed is good for this build because our, our screwdrivers actually hit really hard thanks to our very high engineering and they scale their damage scales with engineering. And also because if we later get improved tools, the attack speed will be very valuable to us because it will make all of our landmines spawn that much more frequently. Pick up a screwdriver and roll and get another one and roll. And we won't be able to afford another one, but I'm still hoping I can lock it. So, yeah, we managed to find six and we can lock a seventh. That's a pretty good set of weapons for the first two shops. So pretty happy with that. Can just let some of these guys get hit by the landmines on their own. All of those, this field of mines is all in the same place, which is a little unlucky for us. 
we're obviously going to look very heavily for things like baby geckos and Sif's Relic because this build is going to leave materials all over the ground all the time. Again, I think I'll just take the attack speed here. I would obviously like the economy stats as well, but I think it's better just to take the level 2 upgrade. Then we'll reroll here. And we are looking for economy stats. Crit chance is actually pretty good on screwdrivers. They already have decent base crit chance, so you can build a, a sort of pseudo critical hit build. And then later on, if you get tentacles and hunting trophies, then screwdrivers actually are a pretty good non-precise precise weapon. But it's early enough in the game, and crit chance is less valuable than attack speed, I think I'm going to reroll. I could also just take the level 1 engineering, but I'm really interested in getting economy stats going early, so we'll grab the luck here. We'll grab this, this, and this, and then defective steroids isn't awful, but I think we can do better. I'm just going to reroll. I'll definitely take the incendiary turret, and I'll take weird ghost as well. We should be able to heal that back up just through consumable drops. Weird Ghost is very efficient, so you should usually buy it when you see it in early waves. <laughs> Although, obviously, we'll have to be careful not to walk into attacks like I just did there. One thing that screwdrivers actually benefit from that is a stat a lot of weapons don't really use is range, because they're very short-ranged and they have a very good attack animation, just the, the thrust in and out. Um, which means that they lose less from range than a lot of other weapons, and also you can, because they're very short-ranged, it's much more much easier for you to hit enemies with them, especially because they have no knockback. You really want to be able to hit enemies relatively safely. Here I'm just going to take the engineering. We obviously do want to increase that as much as possible. And then we're going to buy this, this, and this, and then roll. And we're going to buy a screwdriver, lock the landmines for even more landmines, and Broken Mouth is going to be really good as well. I'm also going to reroll again. We are in wave, the Wave 4 shop, so we're guaranteed to see one weapon, at least one weapon, when we reroll. And since we're the engineering build and have only screwdrivers, it's very likely that that weapon will be a screwdriver. As it happened, we missed, but I think that that was worth it. Alright, so I do need to be careful here, because if I get myself hit, then obviously we're going to lose. Um, I think we'll still take four damage, so I'm not out of the woods yet. And now I should have enough HP that we can take one hit if I need to. Or I guess I don't need to, but if I mess up and do. <laughs> you never, you very rarely need to take hits, but sometimes you will anyways. <laughs> That's why I think Weird Ghost is worth buying. We didn't have to play, like, any more cautiously or anything like that, and we were able to just get a very efficient plus 3 HP. Weird Ghost is is a very high-tier item as a result, I think, and people should buy it much more aggressively than they do. I think it scares people to buy it, but if you have any sort of healing, you'll usually be able to avoid taking damage until the healing uh, gets you back to not being one-shot. Um, so it's usually right to buy it, and you should play more aggressively around it than you probably are. I'm going to buy the Harvesting here from the hands, and then we could take the level 3 upgrade for melee damage, but our damage only scales at 50% because we're the Engineer, so it's only worth 3 damage. And then it only scales at 50% because we're using Screwdrivers, so we only get 1.5 damage on our weapons um, by buying the level 3 melee damage. So here I'm just going to take the movement speed. We're going to need that eventually anyways. Why this and this? I don't think we want Alien Worm, although we will want HP regeneration, but consumable healing is still too important to us right now. And then I will buy this. I'm obviously going to take the Dynamite, because that improves our landmine damage. Eye Surgery is interesting, because it improves any incendiary turrets we get. This does count as burning for the Eye Surgery. And if we want to go into an elemental damage build, then Eye Surgery is very useful. Um, obviously, 
And one way this build could evolve is if we get enough scared sausages and enough elemental damage that we'd want to do that. But in order to make that work, we have to buy elemental damage and percent damage, which is quite difficult to do on the engineer where your damage modifiers are reduced by 50%. So I'm not going to buy the eye surgery, but I will roll to see if I can lock another screwdriver, which I can. And I will buy snake because it's so good with the incendiary turret and it, it's much cheaper than eye surgery. I wouldn't buy that if we didn't already have an incendiary turret, but since we do, I think it's worth buying. Incendiary turret in the late game often, or in the sort of mid game, often ends up being a lot of your clear on engineering builds. And even on non-engineering builds, it's often worth buying the incendiary turret because its DPS is so high even without any base engineering. Um, so it can often be a significant source of wave clear for a lot of builds, even ones that don't build normally build engineering. And, uh, uh, take the pumpkin, I think. We don't care that much about losing 2% damage, and if we get pierce and get turrets, it'll be valuable. Um, that's obviously a lot of ifs, but we could also, I mean, we're only giving up 17 for it, so I think it's worth speculating on the pumpkin there. Here, I'm going to take the 4 HP regeneration. We're going to need to build that eventually, so I want to get that started soonish. And then we'll build this and this, and roll. And now we've got a turret, so the damage from the the piercing damage will help if we find a piercing item um but first let's buy the metal detector our engineering already at 25 i'm pretty happy with that you don't really need two snakes to for your incendiary turret so i'm not going to lock another one one will be fine just to make sure it always spreads to the entirety of a group of enemies Multiple incendiary turrets are worse on the engineer than they are on other characters because they spawn together, and incendiary turret burning damage doesn't stack. So you don't typically want um, you you want them not to spawn together, ideally. But of course, all the engineers' constructs always spawn together. See, we are getting a lot of landmines on the ground, which is awesome. I'd love to get a little more harvesting. Um, dodge and armor, of course, would be very important as well, but let's just buy engineering here to make sure we're actually killing stuff. And here I'm going to take max HP. Our max HP of 27 is pretty poor right now, so I do want to increase that. Plasma sledgehammer would be really fun, but is out of... Um, it is not within the spirit of this challenge, so we're not going to buy that. But I will take the Insanity. We lose 1.5% damage, but Crit Chance, like I said, is quite good on screwdrivers. So I'm pretty happy to buy that. I'm, even though I did mention range is reasonable on screwdrivers, I'm not going to buy glasses, though. It's just such an inefficient item. But Tractor is obviously one of the best things we could possibly have found at this point. So very happy to pick that up. It's still early enough that finding a Tractor is... Uh, both extremely lucky, and it's going to give me so much money over the rest of this game that it will be insanely valuable. Buy the screwdriver and lock the cog, because more engineering is more good. At least that's what they tell you in engineering degrees, I assume. Probably have a whole class on that. Taking a lot of damage here, so I need to go pick up those consumables because I've just walked into a bunch of enemies in a row. Obviously, our actual attack damage is not that high because we're a screwdriver build um, or an engineering build. And so we do need to be pretty careful because without the knockback from wrenches, you can really get in trouble. Also, my dodging is not <laughs> good right now, apparently. I'm going to come over here and play behind all of these landmines. Uh, and then I'm going to make my way back into the middle to pick up the materials before the end of the game. Cute Monkey is going to be excellent. We don't care about ranged damage at all, and we do need more healing. And I'm going to take the armor 
As you saw there, we were taking a lot of damage, so I do actually really want to boost my defensive stats uh, very soon. Going to take Peaceful Bee as well, and in fact, we're just going to buy this whole shop. Great shop for us. Gentle Aliens, great. We are doing only AoE damage anyways because of the screwdrivers, so that's what we want. Um, incidentally, we've got landmines every 6 seconds from our level 3s and every 9 seconds from our level 2s, so we're making a lot of mines. And then here, Ugly Tooth is awesome with engineering builds because the slow e slowing enemies does work on your constructs. So it means that basically every enemy on the field is going to be much slower all the time if you have Ugly Tooth. And we'll take more armor as well. Got enough damage that we are one-shotting most of these enemies, so pretty happy with that. What we need right now is healing, um, attack speed would be nice as well. But as long as my constructs and landmines are still mostly one-shotting the enemies, we're pretty happy. I try to play near my field of turret so it can protect us, but I also don't want to play too close to my incendiary turret because then I'm just going to be killing stuff that it has gotten the damage over time on anyways, so I'm sort of like redundantly attacking things that are already marked for destruction. Second incendiary turret, even though, like I said, it is a little redundant with the first one, it's still good to take, especially when we get it for free like that, and more max HP is going to be awesome. 10 harvesting is very tempting, um, but honestly, I think our harvesting is good enough right now, so I'm going to take the speed. We're about to decrease my speed by 5%, because I have a helmet and an ugly tooth locked in the shop, so I really want to make sure my speed stays reasonable. We'll pick up another screwdriver, buy a helmet, and buy an ugly tooth, and then roll again. Um, I don't really want tardigrade, we'd rather just heal through everything. I'll take the coupon, take the lemonade. I'm not going to buy the pumpkin here because I only have the one turret that would benefit from it, and we don't yet have any form of pierce for it anyways. Um, scared Sausage basically adds one damage to every attack that we do, or three damage over time, but it also increases the damage of my incendiary turrets by one. When you buy Scared Sausage with something that already has a burning effect... Um, it basically just increases the base damage of that weapon by one. So we're doing 16 times 8, we buy Scared Sausage. Um, oh wait, that didn't work. Did we... Oh, because my elemental damage is negative. So that, that should have increased it, but without the elemental damage, it doesn't do that. Um, but I will take the Alien Eyes as well. No, I think I won't. I think I'm going to roll, and we'll take Improved Tools. And then we will roll again. And I will take Tentacle, because we can get a decent amount of healing from that as well. <laughs> I like when I'm like, alright, here I'm going to say something, demo it, and then I've forgotten one of the uh, <laughs> the features of that thing, so it just doesn't work. I have to figure it out on the fly. But normally when you buy a Scared Sausage for a weapon that's already burning, rather than having a percent chance, it just increases the base burn damage of that weapon by one. And of course this will apply burning damage to our landmines and whatever. Explosion size is the best thing we could find at this point, I think, but overall, very happy with how this build is going. We've got a ton of engineering, uh, making very good money every wave. I think I will take the campfire. We do need to increase our healing, so even though I want to have higher speed, um, the one elemental damage is fine, and the HP regeneration will be pretty relevant. Here, I could take 4 Engineering or 15 Luck. I think it's early enough I'm still going to take the Luck. And then here I will take 4 Regeneration again. This way we have 
significantly higher regeneration um, and are much, much more easily able to heal, which is one of the things that this build is currently missing. Take a bag, that's going to be worth a lot of money, of course, and we'll take adrenaline as well. We don't have a ton of dodge yet, but we will want to start building dodge pretty soon. And then here we'll take lure, we'll take another incendiary turret. I wish I was finding, like, laser or explosive turrets uh, over, like, the third incendiary turret, but we're still going to take it. Then we'll buy the silver bullet and then roll. Vigilante Ring is 1.5% damage per wave, so it's going to be working out to... 12% damage. I think that is still worth buying, because our percent damage is quite negative, and it will help our screwdriver attacks actually do stuff. Pencil we'll take, and gambling token. We do have an adrenaline, so I think I will buy the gambling token. I think I won't buy the fin, because I don't really care about lifesteal, um, and I want to have higher luck. So while normally I would buy fin, this character doesn't need move speed as much as many characters, because our melee attacks aren't what's actually doing stuff. Um, and I, I really don't want to reduce my luck, especially because I have two bags already. So we're making a lot of money every time we find a crate. Still would love Pocket Factory. Tree would be one of the best items we could find. Sift's Relic or even just a Baby Gecko would still be worth a lot because we, we still leave a lot of materials on the ground. But mostly I'm looking for regeneration, um, dodge, and armor at this point. Just walking into this loot alien because I'm trying to take it down at the <laughs> end of the wave. Three crates from that wave, which is pretty good. We'll take the plant for sure, and I'm not going to take scope. We'll recycle that. I will take another scared sausage. And then here I'm just going to take 6% uh, dodge. I'd like to start increasing that pretty quickly. Take the vigilante ring. We'll take the pencil. We'll take the gambling token. This The ring will eventually basically bring my damage back to 0%, which we're not that excited about increasing our damage, but I think it is worth just the passive damage gain to help out our screwdriver attacks. That'll help us kill the elites and stuff later on. Very happy to see a level 4 screwdriver, so we can combine and buy another uh, screwdriver to upgrade our damage and our landmines as well. And we should be looking for any attack speed we can get, so do I want the Gummy Berserker? I think I do, even though it cost me an armor, which is quite valuable. We have improved tools. Uh, so any attack speed I find is super valuable on this character. I'll take the Sad Tomato as well. Improved tools just means so many more landmines on the field that I think it's always worth going to be worth buying. Between having low elemental damage and low percent damage, the Scared Sausages are not going to be doing that much in terms of damage, but they're worth having because they improve our um, incendiary turrets, and even the small amount of extra damage on every attack, when you multiply it out over every enemy on the field, they're doing a pretty reasonable amount of damage per second. Because basically every enemy on the field is on fire all the time. So the amount of damage that the scared sausages were doing are, are doing is like um, two per second times every enemy on the field. Which is going to be a reasonable amount of damage. Just like 100 damage per second or something. Uh, I'll just take the engineering here. We need to increase that as well. And we will take sad tomato. We'll take gummy berserker. I'm going to pass on the acid while we do want max HP. I really want to increase my dodge, so I'll roll past that. Crown, I think, will still pay for itself even getting it wave 12, because we have pretty high harvesting already. And then we're going to upgrade our screwdriver and buy landmines. I kind of wonder if Scar is worth buying even this late, because we have no um, XP gain yet, and we have a horde wave upcoming. I think if there wasn't a horde wave, it wouldn't be worth it, but for 50 at this point and a reasonable chance at an extra level thanks to the horde wave, I think it's worth picking up. Now I'll buy the eye surgery and the peaceful bee, and I will take mushroom as well. 
looking for fairy, um, looking for dodge, looking for armor. Any attack speed items we can find, of course, are still very valuable, since we do have improved tools. The best thing we could find would be explosion size, but... Let's not get greedy. Engineer is just so satisfying to play, because you get to sit in your little bunker, if you really want to. <laughs> appeals to the, the universal human desire to dig a hole and sit inside it. We are continuing to upgrade our uh, explosion damage as we go. Do I want more luck or more engineering? I think I'd better start taking more engineering at this point. It's getting late enough that I think we really do need to start just boosting my damage here. Take the eye surgery, the peaceful bee, and the mushroom, and then roll. Dangerous bunny, of course, will always buy. Um, I could buy boxing glove because adding a little bit of knockback to the screwdrivers is pretty worthwhile. Uh, it also does some weird stuff with landmines, so I think I'm going to buy it just because I think that's funny. And then here I'm going to take the metal detector, lock the incendiary turret. We're not going to lock another scar because we'll, we wouldn't be able to buy it until after the horde wave anyways. We've already got one, so we don't need a second one. So normally Boxing Glove I don't think is a very good weapon, but um, on Screwdriver, which has no inherent knockback, it can be useful to protect you from the... Uh, uh, very good item. Uh, it can be useful to protect you from the rib cages. And because it is a secondary stat, um, it applies to turrets as well, so... Because basically everything on the secondary stats page applies to constructs. So um, you can see that enemies are getting slightly jostled around when they get hit by an attack from our turrets. Not by much because it's only three knockback, but it is still kind of funny. Um, we'll just take the attack speed here for more turrets on the ground. And here, I'm going to go ahead and take max HP. I want regeneration as well, but we've got 26, which is not bad. And max HP is going to be more valuable. We have only one armor, which is actually one of the real problems that this build is still having. So I'm going to pass on the stone skin, but I'll buy this. And fertilizer will still pay for itself. We also have crown, so it's worth picking up. Sif's Relic, awesome find. I've been talking about this this whole time, so that's going to help me pull a lot of materials to me. And even better than that, we already have a um, cute monkey, so it's going to give us a lot of health as well. Take the mouse for even more enemies on the field, and let's get to the next wave. This relic is also just so much fun, because just pulling the materials across the map is so satisfying. I think that Sif's Relic and Pocket Factory, I think I've said this before, are probably the two most overbought items in the game. Um, they're, they're the items that people buy even when they do nothing for you, just because they're so fun and so satisfying to use. And there's a lot of builds that don't really care about them at all, but that you buy them on anyways just because it's fun. Making quite a lot of money this wave too, which is pretty nice. 830. Uh, more engineering. Yes, more attack speed, because that is more landmines on the field. We'll take a broken mouth, and I'll roll. Uh, another bag will still definitely pay for itself, so we're going to buy that for sure. We'll buy dynamite. I wouldn't hate more crit chance, but one armor is really um, spooking me, so I really do want to roll for other items here. I'll take a screwdriver for sure, and we'll take Tyler another construct that does a ton of damage, 
and then incendiary turret. We have so many incendiary turrets. Um, Repost will not do anything for us, right? It's one melee damage for my screwdrivers, but it's going to attack back for basically zero, so it's just not worth buying. Uh, Diploma, I will take now, I think, because the, the XP gain could still come in handy. It's possible, but obviously we want this for the 10 engineering, or 15 engineering, because we're the engineer, so incredible find for us in that respect. But I'll buy it because it's an economy item, rather than the screwdriver or warrior helmet, which we're also going to buy. Baby elephant, I think in combination with Sift's Relic, yes, it's only 9 damage, but I think this... Similar to the Scared Sausage, this is going to be enough incidental damage. And we're really just trying to hit thresholds of incidental damage on this character. Enough that enemies are constantly taking enough damage that they actually die. So even adding 9 damage per enemy is again going to be pretty reasonable. Because combined with the, the incidental damage they take from our landmines, the incidental damage they take from our burning, it all adds up. Very happy to get a loot alien kill there. Again, number one item we could find at this point would be explosion size, plastic explosive. Um, number two item is probably fairy. Retromation's hoodie would also be really nice because the increased attack speed obviously is insane when you have improved tools. Um, I will take the wheat. It does cost me elemental damage, which is a little unfortunate, but uh, the harvesting is still going to be good at this point. Here, we'll take 20% attack speed. It's just great for improved tools. And I will just buy out this shop and roll. Um, small magazine I'm going to take anyways. It's very expensive and costs us 3% damage, but 10% attack speed is still just very good for this character. And then I think I do need to buy Terrified Onion. I don't really want to decrease my luck, but we have negative speed, so we're going to buy any way to increase our speed that we can find. Lock Tyler and go to the next wave. So the... Yeah, you can see the the rib cages are just getting like paralyzed when they go into the field of turrets because they're getting knocked back and um, they're getting like punted around by the turrets and slowed by the ugly tooth. It's very funny. If we get enough knockback, then you can really ping-pong enemies across the screen with this kind of build, which is always hilarious. You can see that uh, even though I haven't been focusing on, on attack damage, really, our actual attack damage is still quite strong on this character. Just because screwdrivers scale quite well with engineering, which we're buying a lot of. Quite strong for an engineering build, of course. Um, here I'm going to take 10 luck. I think I could roll for something better, but the luck is still valuable. And then, do I just want regeneration? I think I'm not going to take harvesting, and I'm not going to take elemental damage. So it's regeneration or roll for something else. I'm going to roll I'm roll again, because this is all level 1s. Alright, well that did not work out. We'll just take 3 max HP. Um, but I think I was looking for armor or dodge. Either of those are the things we need the most, so... Uh, it was worth doing that. We're going to continue to upgrade our... All of our weapons and everything. Very happy to find another screwdriver. Bait is 4% damage, which is reasonable for my screwdrivers. And I think we'll be able to kill the bait aliens very easily. I'm not too worried about that, even going into an elite wave. Uh, duct tape. This is an item we haven't found yet that's core to the engineer, so... That's something that this build has been missing. And we'll lock jetpack as well. Basically, I feel like we can deal with the, the lampreys because they're just going to spawn inside my field of turrets. And so I'm not going to have to worry about them too much. We, we're an engineering build. Um, and even though I have okay attack damage on my weapons, I just don't think we have the DPS to kill the, the elite here. So I'm not going to try. When you think you aren't going to be able to kill 
in Elite, it's very important to recognize that early and not try to kill it because you want it to spend as little time as possible in its more difficult later stages. All the Elites are multi-stage bosses, so you want to make sure that they don't get into their harder stages early in the wave. And they, they change stage either at um, certain timer marks or when you get them to certain health thresholds. So if you damage them early but aren't actually going to kill it, you just spend more time with it in its hardest form. You also want to avoid the fighting it in general just because it's hard to fight the elites without taking damage. So if you aren't going to kill it, you should just try to avoid it. We'll take the laser turret there for sure. And then here I'm going to reroll. I could take 20 luck, but I think I'm really looking for dodge or armor. Uh, I'll just take four armor. Armor is going to be perfect for this character. It's the basically the only thing we need. That and a little bit more uh, regeneration would be ideal, but I'm pretty happy to just take all these defensive stats. We'll take the boxing glove as well, because that just seems fun. Um, another eye surgery. Um, I think I'm going to roll past that. I'm just looking for things that will help our actual game plan right now. So just more regeneration, more dodge, more armor. Landmines are especially bad at single target damage to bosses, so we probably will not be killing the bosses. Although, given um, the situation with our central turret cluster, we might be able to. Probably not, though, because they're all incendiary turrets. Honestly, when I got the like seventh incendiary turret, I probably should not have bought it, because they really don't stack that well. But it is funny that we have this many, so I'm happy to have done that. Also, obviously, the the boxing glove that I bought was just for fun, not because it's actually good for this character. Definitely taking a garden, that's going to be a lot of healing, and I will take this just for the plus 10 range. Obviously, the instantly attractive material doesn't... We have Sif's Relic, so we don't need the 20% chance, but still good there. And then I'm going to roll. I'm looking for defensive stats, but I'll take 12% speed. That'll make it a lot easier to dodge the losses. Take this, this, and this, and yeah, I'll take Gambling Token. Up to 45% dodge is not bad. Sharp Bullet is pretty good for all of our turrets, so I might take that. More enemies is also not bad for us. That is not going to put us in danger, and the 2 HP is relevant as well as... The even though we only have four percent life steal, still relevant to life steal sometimes. Um, do I take sharp bullet and boxing glove? I guess I will. Uh, mostly just for fun again. And then sunglasses could help me DPS the bosses down. So let's go with that. Let's go with the boxing glove. We're not finding. It's unlikely that we find a lot that's really important to our strategy at this point. So I'm just picking up anything I think might marginally help. Maybe I can actually try to kill the bosses with the, the crit chance that I have. If I can drag them across into the central turret cluster and then across as many landmines as possible, we can do a bunch of damage to them. So That's the plan anyways. And it's more fun to try to kill the bosses than to try to run away from them regardless. Looks like we do have the damage for it, but obviously I need to not die. Again, just trying to pull these into the central turret cluster. Really sounds like a, a sci-fi concept. Ouch. Alright, taking a lot of hits here, so I do need to back away. Because um, our regeneration is actually quite poor, so I'm quite reliant on consumables to, to heal. So we're going to try to move away and pick up a bunch of consumables. Um, unfortunately, we ran out of time without killing the bosses there because I took a couple extra hits, so I had to stop focusing them. But we did a lot of damage and made it through uh, this run with the Engineer with Screwdrivers. Obviously, awesome... Uh, landmine builds are always 
incredibly fun. Very happy we got improved tools and a bunch of attack speed because it just spawns landmines every two seconds, which is so satisfying. We had dozens of landmines on the field at any given time. Just looking at what we did, we got 34,000 damage off the three scared sausages, so that wasn't bad. Not the most impressive showing, of course, because we had relatively, we had, you know, negative elemental damage, but still a reasonable amount of additional damage for our um, weapons. We ended with 45% dodge, would have liked that to be higher and armor to be higher. I will say this was a slightly unsafe build by me because I bought a lot of random nonsense like boxing gloves and, and stuff like that, whereas we'd have probably been better off just focusing defensive stats, but where's the fun in that? And then other than that, um, bags actually didn't do as well as you'd expect three bags to do. They only made like 150 each, and normally you, bags... Three, if we got three bags, it would be worth like a thousand materials. I think we got pretty... With with 44 luck, I'd say we got fairly unlucky on crates. Um, overall, this, this game, we should have seen a few more in general. But overall, just a fun, solid way to win. And really happy to do Engineer with Screwdrivers, because it's just a, an extremely fun method of play. Always nice when the landmines actually do get to blow stuff up. I'll be back at some point to do Engineer with Hammers, because that's still my white whale. Uh, it's one that I really do want to do at some point. But until then, my friends, I hope that you enjoyed this video. And as always, if you have, uh, feel free to leave a comment and like the video. And you can subscribe to my channel for more Brotato and other strategy game content, including the Brotato expansion, whenever that releases this summer. All right, cheers, friends. I'll catch you next time.